make this official? Toronto? Jensen Ackles and Jared Padalecki. Hello, Toronto. How are y'all? It is awesome to be here. Uh, many, many years in a row on behalf of Supernatural. I was actually, a little fun fact, uh, 13 years ago. Oh, do tell. Today. <laughs> gather around, gather around. I was here shooting the, uh, the Oscar award winning New York Minute. What, uh, what category did it win? All of them, right. <clears throat> they made a new category called Winner of Everything. <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember getting the script and being like, Sweet, you got, you got, a, you got a, an Oscar for that. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to brag about it, but... Right. Female in a leading role? Is that the... Yeah, they just, they just threw them all at me. Uh, they just threw all of them. I have a sound so, editing one. I don't even do that. <laughs> uh, it's nice to be here with you guys. This is the last group of uh, SPN family we'll see before season 12 premieres. So. <laughs> with some pretty cool stuff coming down the pipe. Uh, some fun episodes. Some that we've... Uh, that if you told us what it was about several years ago, or even this summer, we've been like, what? Um, but it's cool, and I think we're excited to kind of have a last little morale boost with you guys before uh, going back to work this week and uh, premiering on Thursday. Hi. So without further ado, unless you want to do some more, uh, hey, you're doing a great job of a doing. I'm, uh, I do, I do, I do. You do, I do. The best of them. You do. I do, I do. <laughs> I do, I do. Uh, hi, how are you? Great, how are you? Great, how are you? <laughs> My question is for both of you if cast were to enter your life sooner, maybe like when you guys were in high school or something, how do you think it would be different? <laughs> How about no? That's <laughs> my. I, uh, we're uh, easy for you to say. We're expecting uh, uh, twins. Uh, my wife. trying to figure out names, and I actually threw a suggestion name at my daughter, JJ, who was uh, three, and I said, how about, and I said the name, and she just looked at me, she goes, how about now? <laughs> Not a word of a lie. I didn't know how to respond to that. Or was, there was like pride, and then like heartbreak all of a sudden. Um, if Cass had come into uh, the Winchesters' lives earlier. Um, I don't know. I mean, he, he didn't really need to because we weren't necessarily dealing with the you know war of heaven and hell yet. Uh, demons weren't necessarily an issue. I mean, it was more vampires and werewolves and yeah, he would have things been... that go bump in the night. Less, less the less the biblical war that was happening. He would have been unnecessary. So really, no different. <laughs> yeah, it really goes different than it is now. <laughs> oh. Thank you very much. Superfluous comes to mind. Maybe he <laughs> maybe wouldn't have had a trench coat. Hi. Hi. I'm just wondering what was your favorite thing to kill on Supernatural? My future wife. <laughs> So much therapy right there. <laughs> so now anytime we're in a disagreement, I'm always like, this is because I killed you, isn't it? <laughs> no, no, it needs to be, look, I killed you once already. Kidding. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like a, then 11 years from now. So he doesn't take advice from me. Maybe it's, it's Billy Bush or something that would come out on video. <laughs> uh, uh, that was fun because it was silly. Um, yeah, I'll go with that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I, 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 would say, I would say vampires are fun, but it's actually 
the filming of it is not as fun because what you have to do, the you know the lopping of the head um, is kind of a real technical pain because you have to like we have a, what's called a switcher where they line up the image of where the where said vampire is standing and then that person then has to step out then I come in with the machete and I swing through an empty frame but they have it lined up to where I, so I have to look at a screen and make sure that my machete is lined up with what image they just kept. Anyway, it's technical, it's not nearly as fun as it looks on camera. Um, I wish it did, because that would be my favorite, but um, I don't know, what would be, what's, what's, I will say that when Digo was fun many, many years ago, because we got to shoot a, a, a flare gun right into some big giant chest. And watch it oh, what was the what was the flamethrowers? Remember? Oh, the changelings. Changelings. That was fun. The flamethrower, the the, uh, the homemade flamethrower. Yeah, the hairspray and the thing. Well, that was bugs, and that was bees, and that, that's still one of my favorite stories. It's like, don't worry, don't worry, Ackles. They're they're you know they're docile bees. <laughs> they're we, super calm. They're in therapy. Uh, we've talked. You know, they're not. They're not gonna. They're not gonna sting you unless provoked. And I'm like, okay, so just be real calm around them. Be calm around them. They'll be totally fine. I'm okay. Okay. Um, all right, gents, they're ready for you on set. Um, props walks up. Here's the can of hairspray and the lighter that you'll be torching the bees with. <laughs> okay, hang on, because this guy just said unless provoked. <laughs> They're not gonna, but if I'm torching them with fire, that's probably provoking them. And then it literally was, ooh. Well, good luck. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi. Hi. Um, I was wondering, now that you both have families, is it hard to balance your uh, career and your family life at the same time? Yes. <laughs> Let's just say that it's very imbalanced. <laughs> yeah, you know, I think, uh, what's funny, I just had a talk with uh, Chris Schmilkenjahr about it, because he has two young kids as well. And <clears throat> I think <clears throat> it's really nice to, to show the kids that I'm, I'm making sacrifices, you know? Like, I, I love to go home and play and watch little TV shows and play in the front yard and play with our chickens and go swimming and this and that. But I, we have chickens. He's got chickens. <laughs> we got chickens. One less than we used to, but that's a <laughs> story for a different day. Um, it's great though, that means that I don't have to get chickens. <laughs> but it's nice, I think it's, in, my kids are young, you know, four, almost five and almost three. Uh, but I, I think it's important that they see now how, how difficult it can be, because obviously, I mean, I, I, he and I have both been successful in this industry, and um, it, when you've reached a certain degree, they, they treat you well, and they pay you well, and we can afford some of the finer things, but I, it's nice, it feels good to know that my kids are seeing how much I work, how much, how active I am, how much I have to sacrifice, so that they don't, you know, and kids are kids, but I don't want them to ever think like, hey, this is just magical, and it's there because it's there, and it doesn't take any work, you can just have success without really sacrificing. Um, so, I think that's kind of a silver lining. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Thank you. Hey, Good guys. Day. Um, so, staying on the whole theme of family and everything, I was hoping that each of you could share, like, your favorite, most memorable parenting experience. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, one that comes to my mind is uh, when my daughter was younger. She was, I think, not, not even a year. And was still, uh, we were, we moved on to the bottle. She was bottle game. And um, we were at my in-laws' house, and I had, uh, they were, I, I'd gone to the store to get some stuff. It was the holidays, and I was coming back. Uh, and I came to the door, and JJ came, kind of like waddling up to me, and I was like, "Hey!" And I picked her up, and I started like, you know, bouncing her above my head. And she had just been fed. Oh God. So, oh, yes. full bottle puke all over my face. I mean, direct hit. Like, she sunk my battleship. It was... It was full on. And, and I just I just held it. I was like, help! And so my wife comes running in, running in and she's like, oh my gosh, don't move. 
thinking like she's gonna, you know, get me a towel to, because it's dripping. No, she ran in the other room to get her camera. <laughs> that for the rest of my life. Um, but there are many, many, many more. That's certainly just one. Yeah, I actually have the same experience. Um, with my daughter threw up all over his face, too. Oh. Which is, this was, I was, I was playing with the kids after dinner, after dinner before nap time, before bed, uh, bath time and bedtime, and I was kind of throwing Tom, Tom likes to wrestle, and he threw up all over me, and I, I was laying down on my mattress, and Jen was there, and Shep was there, and I was holding Tom out, and he threw up, and I just held him. It was an interesting experience to have some, to have another human being throw up on you, and to not be, to not be grossed out. And that sounds weird, but to be like, you know, if I was like in the hallway and someone threw up fifty feet away, I'd be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> this was, this is barf on me. And this was, this was a child milk bar. This was like, you know, had a quesadilla bar. Um, so I just kind of sit there, and Jen went and got a towel. A quesadilla bar. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We had had we had had Maudie's. we had had Maudie's and had Maudie's is a Mexican food place. Now. I love that. Um, but I've actually had a different experience that Jensen hasn't been so uh, lucky to have yet. Um, I have boys, and <laughs> every now and again, when they're laying on their changing table pad and they're young, and you can smell something's going on. Okay, it's time to change your poopy diaper. And sometimes you un-Velcro the he says it just diaper, like that too. and you start to take the diaper off. And apparently there's a phenomenon where when a young boy's private part gets exposed to oxygen, they like to urinate. So I found myself as a father on a few occasions going like, oh God, and just putting... <laughs> All right, time to wash your hands. I'll come change your diaper in a second. Uh, so. But it's, again, it's funny to not be, just, it's just matter of fact, right? You get like one of those bomb squad things that has like the shield. They sell, they sell PPTs. They sell, <laughs> I was just gonna say that, I was just gonna say that. They sell a little, I'm sure there are people out there who have young boys who know this. Yeah, we went and bought PPTs, and they're little like diaper style TVs for, well, for the PP. <laughs> I'll let you borrow some. I have my own, they're a little bigger. Like, thank you very much. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I hope y'all didn't just eat. Hi. Hi. Somebody out there's like, I just had a quesadilla. Um, so I was wondering, like, with how much you guys like to fool around on set and all the gag reel footage we get. What are you accusing us of? Like, <laughs> I was just wondering. How, what's the longest amount of time you spent trying to get through filming like a single episode? Uh, well, we're only allowed eight days per episode, but there's certainly a few scenes that I've had to be kind of like walk away from uh, and come back to. The, the hardest I ever left was Provenance. I think Provenance, I could not get my, my act back together. Um, no, and you were the only one left. <laughs> no, that's not true. Taylor was laughing too. The two of you were Giggle fest. hysterical, yeah. and I think this was in the gag reel, and then it like shows me in the background just like, really? <laughs> there are a few times, every now and again something makes me laugh, and it's not stopping. Um, there was Shapeshifter skin. Friday night. Friday night, yeah. Which I, we I shared with some night. of you this morning at the gold panel. Uh, Jensen caught on fire, and I found it funny. <laughs> I didn't fully catch on fire. What a better opportunity to laugh at your friend when they're on fire. His reaction was comical, and so I just started laughing. Um, couldn't really stop. Uh, it but wasn't comical. For me it was. <laughs> it was like survival mode. Not for me, it was laugh mode. So Misha in the scene, Cass uh, has something he's got. It, it, catches on fire, and Dean grabs a garbage can, and Cass then puts the, uh, the item that's on fire into the garbage can, and Dean pours a pitcher of water on it. Well, you don't really rehearse something like that, you just kind of do it, because we have a thing where uh, gags like that, it's like, um, we say, you know what, let's just shoot the rehearsal in case we get lucky, 
and it works, because it would be it'd be really crappy to actually have it go perfect in rehearsal and then it not go well during the take. So we just go ahead and rehearse while we're shooting, basically. It's basically just shooting with no rehearsal. Um, and the item that was on fire uh, lodged itself against the wall of the trash can that my hand was holding, because it was, in theory, it was going to flame sooner be coming up the other side of the trash can, which was I was gonna hold it at an angle and that would have worked fine, but, and it was, it was, uh, it was on fire a lot more than I had anticipated. <laughs> So much so that the flames were on my hand and like my hand was burning and I was just supposed to act cool and like put it out, you know, with a pitcher of water and then set it down. But instead of me just walking up and, you know, boom, the, uh, the, the flaming item goes into the can and I do, and I set it down, it was more like, <laughs> and just that, it, it was a lot more subtle than that. That's, I'm sure, what it looked like in Jared's mind. Um, and he knows me so well that he knows that for just a second, I broke from Dean to Jensen going, oh crap, my Burning. hand's on fire. <laughs> and that little split moment of character break of, shoot, um, was just enough to send him over the edge. Yep. And I, I put the trash can down and I come back and I've still got dialogue and so I'm still talking and he's now standing next to me, the cameras are looking this way. And he's now completely turned around and looking the other way. And I'm like, and I'm talking, but in my mind I'm thinking, what is he doing? Why is he looking behind? And then I'm like, oh crap, the trash can's probably now on fire. And it's directly behind me. And should I maybe be worried? Should I be turning around to see the flame ball that's happening? And then I kind of, I kind of just throw a cursory glance over at him, and I can see that there's like tears coming down his face, <laughs> streaming down, streaming down, streaming. And, and then, then I was just like, okay, now I know what he's doing. He's turning away from the camera because he's laughing so hard that his tear, <laughs> tears are coming down his face. And I guess in an effort not to ruin the scene, yeah. he was like, instead of just being laughing hysterically on camera, he was just like. Hmm. <laughs> And so I finally stopped the take, and I'm like, dude, what? And he's like, you're, you, you the, with the, uh, the. I'm like, yeah, my hand was on fire. He's like, I don't know. <laughs> it was pretty funny. Yeah, so that happens. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, hi, my name is Paula. This is my daughter, Kaylee. Hi. Uh, we started watching the show last year because she's a little young, and we watched 11 seasons in one year. This is our first convention, and it's amazing. Yeah. We've been a little starstruck uh, a couple times. Uh, we wanted to know, is there any actors or performers that make you starstruck? That make you nervous? Yeah. <laughs> Her or him or whatever. Uh, yeah, a really quick question. Anybody else start watching the show within a year? No way. Wild. Super cool. Someone's like, hey, hey. <laughs> Very cool. <laughs> Honestly, anybody watching in the year? Hey, <laughs> hey. Um, Starstruck. I. Yeah, you, you certainly hit him, and I think some people have heard some stories yeah. about when I've, I've literally had to pull him away from making it just a complete ass of himself in front of people. Um, yep. So I, I That's me. That's yeah, me. that'd be this guy right here. Um, I, however, my, I guess my reaction or my <laughs> go-to action would be just to run. If I see somebody that is, you know, uber famous or somebody that I admire their work or I'm a fan of in some regard, then I generally will just about face and leave the situation. Um, and for two reasons. One, I don't know how I'm going to handle myself, and I don't want that to go wrong, so I just figure avoid it. And two, I don't know how they're gonna handle themselves, and if they're a jerk, then that's gonna ruin my, the way that I think about them and their work, or their, their whether it's their music, or their acting, or whatever it is. And I, I kind of, in an effort to preserve both of those things, I just avoid at all costs. <laughs> I'm not saying you guys should do that, because I love having you here, and it's amazing. <laughs> but that's a 
a bit of a default reaction for me. I don't get that way with actors because they feel like my uh, peers, you know? Like, I, I've, I've worked with some amazing actors um, and actresses, and part of me feels like, <laughs> and Jensen, and Jensen. Uh, <laughs> part of me feels like, that's cool. Like, with enough hard work and enough dedication, I'll, I'll, I can be like that one day. Or, you know, I feel like it's attainable, but with musicians, I think I get like that. Like, pretty infamously uh, when I met some of the members of Pearl Jam. <laughs> Nerded out just a little bit. And then afterwards, it's like, I didn't know I'd react like that. <laughs> I always hoped I wouldn't react. I always hoped I wouldn't act like that. Uh, but yeah, but welcome, guys. Thanks for uh, taking the journey with us. Yeah, it's great to have you on here. Thank you. Thank you. Very cool. We love movies. Cheers, guys. Hey there. Hi. Um, sorry if I like sound really jumbled up because I'm really nervous right now. You don't but, sound like it. Well, I am. <laughs> um, Fine, I believe you. Jeez. <laughs> I was wondering, this is like for both of you, um, if there was only or one similarity that you think is the most similar between you and your character, what do you think it is and why? The hair. <laughs> uh, I, I, I am a researcher. J Jared very much wants to know everything about what he is doing, as Sam does. You know, like Sam, when he found the middle, when they found the middle letters bunker, and there was a library full of books, Sam was like, this is amazing. I can learn everything about everything that's ever had to do with anything that has ever had to do with the supernatural. Um, Jared's kind of like that. Like, if I get into something, I, I can't read enough about it, I can't watch enough YouTube videos about it, or, you know, talk to friends about it or whatever. I, I really delve into subjects that I become passionate about, as does Sam. I don't know why, it's just the way I was wired. Um, but yeah, that's probably the one that clicks in my head. Um, I, I, I could probably sit down and think of uh, a few. Um, I would say that um, one that comes to mind, and I'm not this is, I'm not like trying to pat myself on the back here, but I would say that- Awesomeness. Yes, awesomeness. <laughs> is something that I bring to that character. <laughs> because I, I have it in me. <laughs> Thanks for that, Jared. Um, Don't mention it. Uh, I would say that, um, and maybe to a fault sometimes, but I tend to put others before myself a lot. Um, and I think Dean does that quite a bit. I think he, he will gladly sacrifice himself for, um, for people and, and he, will, he will think about them first. Uh, and I tend to do that sometimes to a fault, but uh, uh, yeah, that's one. And awesomeness. <laughs> I will say that well, there's many, there's many great things. One of the great things is that um, I don't know if you've noticed, but the year-round wardrobe of Dean and Sam Winchester tend to be layered <laughs> and with coats. I'm not sure that would really go well if we were shooting in Phoenix or in Austin or any anywhere like south of the Mason-Dixon line. Um, so I, I really appreciate the uh, the weather and the temperature uh, in Vancouver because it it keeps us comfortable. Otherwise, it would just be a mess. Um, favorite Canadianism? I think he and I both like. Uh, using the term, we both adopted the term toque. <laughs> or at least I have, I used to say toque. But uh, yeah, I like, I, like the, I like the word toque. I, it's something that's used widely here. I, I, I chuckle at 
uh, my favorite Canadianism, and it's one of those things that uh, I enjoy it because I enjoy the the pride or the excitement. But I laugh and do an impression sometimes if it's like <clears throat> you know there's a news flash and it's, you know breaking news. Uh, Ukraine was invaded by Russia. There are 15,000 uh, big aircraft and F-16 en route to deploy. In other news, Matt Sundin came back to the Vancouver Canucks, and you're like, everything is hockey. Hockey, 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 hockey. It'll be like, yeah. It would be like, World War III, this is, yeah, yeah, this is what the Vancouver Canucks, this is what the Maple Leafs had for breakfast this morning, and they'll spend a half an hour talking about it, and at the very end, they'll be like, and also the world is about to die. <laughs> The world is at war. Uh, now for a commercial break. <laughs> Kim Jong Un sending nuclear warheads to the five major cities in the U.S. and Canada. Anyways, on to hockey. Back to hockey. <laughs> uh, I think there was love y'all's hockey, <laughs> uh, and, and I love it. I, but my my legitimate favorite part about uh, Canada is, is the the people that we've been able to be around, um, both in cities like Toronto, Vancouver, when we visit, but especially. In Vancouver, because we've had such a chance to meet uh, locals since we spent so much time with our crew. Um, just great people looking to have a good time and uh, be kind to others. So, yeah, we've certainly made some lifelong friends with uh, with uh, many Canadians who we've been working with, had the pleasure of working with for well over a decade now. That's and, um, and so that is that's certain, certain something, certainly something that will stay with us for the rest of our life. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> one moment on set, what would it be and why? First things first, how good are you with that dodgeball? <laughs> can you, can you hit me from there? Do it! I won't Maybe. move. Maybe? I give you permission. <laughs> Do it! Alright. Oh my god. I'm short, that was a good shot. I will admit, after his bounce, I thought I was going to need a, 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 a ET. <laughs> but it bounced high. I was a little nervous. I was like, I said I wouldn't move. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, favorite episode from filming? Favorite moment from filming? Um, if you guys could go back and relive one moment on set, what would it be and why? You have an idea? Fornicus! I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and speak for you. The day Genevieve Cortese walked on the set. <laughs> and I will say that a moment I'd like to go back and relive is when I saw him, Genevieve sitting in her cast chair on the set. And I'm not kidding, there was an open cast chair right here. But this was Jared. cross-legged staring at it. Oh, that's happening. <laughs> that's, I wish I could have, got, I wish I could go back and, and maybe taken a picture of that moment and just maybe relished in it a little bit more because it was, uh, it was funny as hell to see this, you know, big kind of, close your ears, stud of a guy uh, <laughs> sitting there like a little puppy in love. Aww. But, you know, we've, We've had many moments, very, very fun moments on set. I mean, the, the actual filming aside, like our life on set is, is, can be quite entertaining at times. And we, we really, truly enjoy doing what we do because um, not only do we like to play these characters and tell the story, but the working environment that we have kind of helped create with the people that we work with is, is really a great place. And it's, it's fun and it, it allows for a lot of uh, unique and fun moments to happen, and we're really appreciative of that. 
Yeah, there have been a few. That is the obvious. Thank you for embarrassing me in front of everybody. What I do. There have been a few others in hindsight, even before that, that if I ever write a book about my supernatural experience, um, they'll, they'll... Good job, you just roped yourself into writing a book. It was. Uh, I know. Lynn, don't even look at me like that. Um, I think there are a few moments that stick out, and I, I recall one. It was during Wendigo, so the pilot was a blur. Um, it was like 16 days of shooting. I think we were shooting six days weeks, right? I think we were. Anyways, we might not have been. Anyways it was a, the pilot was a big a blur. You're meeting new cast members. You're meeting new cinematographers, this and that. And then when Digo started, so three months later, we get picked up for 13 episodes. We go to Vancouver. I've never been. He's been for a few years. And I remember we were shooting Wendigo, and we had a lunch break. And Ackles was like, hey, um, there's a cool cool spot over here, because he knew the city and he knew the area. And he's like, there's a cool spot over here if you want to come eat this way. And I was like, all right. And so we grabbed our lunches and we went and sat on the seawall on that bench across from the sulfur. It was a taster's choice moment. It was a taster's choice moment. <laughs> and we kind of sat there Some and talked. Some of don't know what that is. Google it. Yeah. And it was a cool kind of like, this is cool, man. Like, I hope this, I hope this goes for a season or two. <laughs> uh, and ever so often, moments like that happen again. Uh, Bunsen Lake, uh, Dead in the Water was another one, like running, like jumping, running down a dock, diving into the water with safety divers sitting there under the water where you can't see them to make sure we don't drown. Uh, and then running back up and getting into a hot tub they had set up because it was so cold. Um, Certain moments like that, or in New West, when the angel tackles Castiel through the window and they fell like seven floors on. There are some moments where you sit there and you're like, man, this is cool. You know, like too often it's a job. Too often it's a job that we love and that I'm very inspired by. But every now and then you're like, oh, I see why people dig it. Like, this is kind of fun. Um, and I kind of feel, I feel more like an audience member than like a um, part of somebody in front of the camera. Um, but yeah, I'd like to compile a list of those moments. Thank you. Nice shot. What? <laughs> Who's singing? You guys are up for it. I'm gonna need you to speak American. <laughs> nice shot, by the way. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Hi guys. Hey there. Congra Congratulations, Jensen, on the twins. Thank you. It's gonna be a hand. 